Hi guys, this is Mark Davis at Optimum Technology Transfer. Welcome back to you all. In this video, I'm going to get a little bit nostalgic. I'm going to take a look at using the SUMIF function uh, in Excel. Um, pivot tables came along, I think it was Excel 5, wasn't it? And um, maybe since then, the SUMIF function and the COUNTIF function perhaps haven't seen as much um, as much use as they did prior to prior to pivot tables coming along. Um, having said that, they still, I believe, do uh, have their place in any Excel model. Um, what I'm also going to do, actually, guys, in f uh, f a future video, is look at the development of the SUMIF function and indeed the COUNTIF function into some ifs plural and COUNTIFs plural as well. In, in effect, average if and average ifs, which Microsoft has developed um, from I think 2007 onwards. This is Excel 2013. You probably recognise that. So I've got some raw data here that I'd like to do just a little bit of analysis with, just to touch on the SUMIF function in Excel and come back to more complex stuff in future videos. Um, if you've had a look, if you've checked out my uh, pivot table videos here on YouTube, uh, you may recognize, of course, this data. I've modified it slightly to uh, to use in the SUMIF demo, um, but very, very, very similar indeed. Over on the right hand side of this uh, classic Excel list, we've got some um, some category names, so the categories of products that these guys sell, and we've got some total sales figures. So what I would classically do in a pivot table in Excel is something like this. Yeah, I've chosen to use the category name as the rows, the row labels on this left hand side here, and for each of the categories of product, I've got the total sales. So there we go sales totals have been added to the um, to the values section and that's the kind of analysis that you come up with in um, several clicks um, a pivot table now this is my sum if demo sheet exactly the same numbers yeah but created in a formula way getting your hands dirty as it were using Excel formulas to get the result that you require check it out let's have a look at this one that I've got here so this is how you use the SUMIF function. I'm using the three arguments. Um, there are two required. The first two arguments are required and the third argument is optional. I'm using all three arguments. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy and hide away these guys. We can't cheat, so we can't see them. And then delete all of these, all of this data. I've just got a simple um, some at the bottom of my list there. Okay, so I want a total sales for each of the categories of product. Total sales figure in these cells for each of these categories of product that the client sells. Okay, so I will use the SUMIF function. I require a range. I'm going to go across to my raw data sheet and I'm going to select the range. I'm kind of in, interested in investigating um, the categories. I'm going to use my F4 function key to make that uh, that range of cells absolute. I'm going to be copying it down through the various other categories, of course, and then comma. And I can see from my tooltip here, I need to specify the criteria next. Now, the criteria is going to be the particular category of product. And then a comma. You can see the third argument is an, is an optional argument. You can see that, of course, from the square brackets. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use it. I'm going to utilize that particular argument. And let me go back up to the top of my list. And I'm going to add up to total up all of these total sales figures here in column N. Again, because I am going to be copying it down through, I'll need to make that um, absolute. Press return or enter. And there is the total sales for that particular category of product. Check it out, F2. Now when we come to looking at using some ifs a little bit later on with multiple criteria, we'll talk about what is appropriate as far as is that cell reference, does it need to remain relative, does it need to become absolute, is it going to be a combination of relative and absolute for example, or well, that's to come on a future video. I can just double click or drag down through to seafood at the bottom and there we go. That's the sum if, if you like, implementation uh, to get those same figures. There's the pivot table version as it were and there's the sum if version. Pivot table demo here, let me zoom into it so we can see it nice and clearly. There's the sum if version as it were, let me zoom into it as well. Same numbers of course, uh, but evaluated 
in a very very different way indeed okay I'll have two on that to leave you guys with um, that particular formula there on the screen that's it from me Mark Davis at Optimum Technology Transfer um, good luck with it all do take care um, do look back on here at YouTube um, because I will be certainly evolving that developing some if into some ifs with multiple criteria in fact give you a little bit of a taster this let me just go across this is the kind of idea that I'd like to look at uh, as I say in a future video video so do check out um, our YouTube channel here optimum technology transfer check this out guys have a look at that F2 on that that's a some ifs because what I've got is I've got not just the product category criteria but I've also got the I'd like to analyze I've got online sales I've got retail sales I want to kind of a breakdown to be able to compare and contrast the online sales against the retail sales for each of the products against each of the quarters in the particular year that I'm interested in analyzing but something like that is to come like I say I'll go back to my sum if demo I'll left two on that leave it with you guys that's it from me again Mark Davis optimum technology transfer take care and bye bye